Hello and welcome back to the Satisfactory Report. We've got some extra special guests this week, but first let's blast through the news. Last week, Coffee Stain put out a video demoing Arachnophobia Mode, which is a setting allowing you to replace any spiders in the game with cute pictures of cats. Thanks to that, we obviously now know that there's this attacking spider creature which will leap at the player and make ominous noises. We got a look at this nice jungle environment, lots of mushrooms and plant life here to see, and interestingly there's this little creature that's been dubbed by the community the Jungle Finch. Not much is known about it, but it does look like it's some sort of flightless bird, maybe? Then this week, Jace put out Q&A number 3. He answered a bunch of questions, he's confirmed that there are at least 24 unique buildings so far, excluding vehicles and the like. He's also finally confirmed that there's not going to be any kind of terrain modification, no terraforming, landscaping, etc. There's also going to be no changing weather in the world, and no pollution. There was some discussion of a potential future top-down view of some sort. He said that while this poses difficulties, what with the 3D nature of the game, the team have some sort of solution in mind and might be implementing it in the future. He's also confirmed there won't be any VR mode. He did confirm that there will most likely be a creative mode. However, we won't have access to this during the alpha phase, so that they can test the game with players playing normally first. He spoke a bit about progression and tech trees, hinting that there's going to be a system by which you can unlock new technology for buildings and vehicles. He said there'll be multiple different ways to unlock things, but at least one of them is going to involve discovering new resources in the world. He said the game will most likely have Steam achievements, but not during alpha, as obviously everything's too unstable for the time being. And he's once again confirmed, as discussed last week, that vehicles and your factories will continue to run regardless of where you are in the game world. Okay, so now it's time to bring on this week's guests. First off, back again from last week, hello Killer Drone. Hey, what's going on, man? And of course, this week's special guest from Coffee Stain, it's Jace. Hey, how's it going, guys? It's going pretty good, and on that subject, that leads right into my first planned question for you, Jace, which is, how is it going? Uh, what exactly? The game or me? <laughs> it was really open to interpretation. Well, as a professional uh, question dodger, I'll say, uh, yeah, I'm doing great. <laughs> you could have dodged that so much better, man. You could have been like, I don't know, how is it going? And then just left the suspicion. Yeah, like. exactly. <laughs> we all know what it is, right? <laughs> and how about you, Killer Drone? Um, literally everything in the it perspective is indeed going. I hope you're ready, Jace, for a pretty intense good cop, bad cop routine here between myself and Killer uh -huh. Drone. Um... We haven't actually discussed which of us is the good cop or the bad cop. Can I be the bad cop? <laughs> All right. First actual question I want to ask is, how did you first get into programming? I kind of messed around with making games using like RPG Maker way back in the day. But then, you know, I did a bunch of like web development contract jobs and then went to university for um, video games. I joined it to be an animator. Turns out I fucking hate animating. <laughs> but I really took to programming and ever since then, yeah, since I was 19. Yeah, I actually kind of did something similar while I was at school I used to spend most of my time sat at the back of classes messing around with this program called the Games Factory. Okay. The only way even then I could find it was on the cover of a magazine. Wow. And it was just like this 2D game making platform with like a graphical logic system. Those were the days though, right? Just on the front of magazines? I mean, does that still happen? I don't even know if anybody buys magazines anymore. Or discs. What are they? <laughs> I did programming for my first three years of college, and I decided I didn't want to sit behind a computer the rest of my life, you know. <laughs> and so instead, here you are. Sitting behind a computer, computer. yeah, look, but I never said my life time. choices were the best, but... <laughs> Uh, um, I do kind of have a follow-up question for that one. Mm -hmm. Do you have like an area of expertise in programming? No, I'm, I'm kind of just a generalist. I mean, if anything, I've been doing vehicles since the beginning of making uh, video games. They've always been shit, but they're less shit now. <laughs> um, so maybe vehicles, but I do, I do anything that's required. So is it fair to say that you're more or less the lead programmer for vehicles on Satisfactory? Because no one else worked on them and I obsessed over them. You know, that's kind of it. There's no like role or anything like that, but I, I am the main vehicle programmer for sure. Okay, so you don't like have specified areas that you guys decided that each of you were going to focus on? Yeah, absolutely not because we have five programmers. That's it. Making this entire game. So we can't specialize. <laughs> so I feel like uh, I've been good copying you for too long. Kill a drone. Do something terrible. Do something terrible? Okay, I have 
one question that's been bugging me. What is the plan after the alpha? The plan after, shit. Uh, again, the, the answer for the most part, again, is an I don't know. But we do have some plans of what we might be doing. Really, we're not sure because at the end of the day, we, we don't want to plan everything and set it into stone when it's really important at this stage to be reactionary. And that is a huge advantage we have as being an indie developer. So if things in the alpha are going so well, who knows? Maybe, maybe we should bring release or if we have a beta, a beta. Maybe we should bring things forward closer to us. Or if things are going really shit, maybe we just cancel, stop the alpha put out fires and then maybe restart it. Like we need to be a little reactionary, but we have some vague plans on what we hope for. You know, and that, that's another reason why we haven't announced anything really about the alpha yet is because again, we don't want to say a date and disappoint people. We want to be sure. And again, we're not this huge company that's like, we got to have a marketing plan for the next three months. We're just winging it. And so when, when we're sure, uh, when we're happy and, and think it's alpha ready, then we'll give some details. And y'all already had an alpha deadline, correct, <laughs> yeah. that y'all missed? Yeah, exactly. How quick was the explosion of interest in the community? Oh my god, it was... Uh, about 30 seconds after the trailer <laughs> yeah, was yeah, released. Yeah, that's... that's. I was not ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I immediately, once I saw the trailer, I immediately went to y'all's site, saw the Discord link, joined it. Right. And it was just an explosion. Yeah, and, and like, I, I hadn't managed a Discord like this before. Shit was going absolutely fucking crazy. And a few people were like, hey, it looks like you might need some mods. And I just took the first six people who asked. Don't remember if I messaged you, Jace, but I was like, do y'all want me to like help y'all out with this Discord? And y'all were like, nah, I think we got it as they have like fire extinguishers <laughs> yeah. after stuff like it was it's, it's fine it's, you know that little <laughs> this is fine little meme whatever it is okay well i'm gonna try and steer this conversation a little bit towards content that's enough time i have today guys i'll catch you guys <laughs> <laughs> end screen wait when's the alpha hold on yep uh it's bedtime uh <laughs> So there are scenes in the trailer in which we have some really big creatures. Mm -hmm. Are those creatures bosses or are these things that we'll just run into randomly around the world? Are you, for example, talking about the um, big thing The big the Pikachu guy. The big flying Pikachu guy. Uh, <laughs> the big Pikachu guy? Is that the one that spits out Pikachus? Little... Yeah, the flaming Pikachu guy. You know who I'm talking about. No, I actually don't. <laughs> but... Hold on. Let me, let me grab the guy that I think he's talking about. Yeah, that, that thing. Okay, so I'm going to give you some exclusive news about that. You ready? I've never seen that before. I have no idea what it is, and I don't know where it is, and I don't know when it is. Well, that is some exclusive details no, right there. No, no. All, all, all I'm proving here is, like, <laughs> the level of obliviousness that I have to, to large areas of the project, which is actually You have true. no clue what Oscar's doing right now, do you? No, you actually, have no idea. <laughs> no, I really, I legitimately don't. Like, I am tunnel visioned on my task. Oh, here's some trivia for you. So far, all the cats that are in the game, and you've only seen one, there's more than one sprite. Um, uh -huh. uh, they're uh, Ninin's cats. Oh, right. <laughs> Okay. It's one of the coffee stain devs who is sometimes in the Discord. In the trailer, they have the table that you're standing at. It looks like they're crafting stuff at it. Is that crafting bench something that you're going to get early on in the game to get like your first supplies to go out and explore? Or is that something that you're going to have to kind of work toward? Mm. Um... I'm not sure if I'm allowed to confirm this or not, but I really think it's fine. Yeah, you, you get access to it early because you can craft things. Um, and <laughs> you probably need that to craft things. So yeah, you, you have that, that workbench. Well, I'll take it. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's <laughs> we, fine to tell. You managed to squeeze a feature out of him. <laughs> so another question that's kind of off topic, but still related. Are there going to be any type of voice actors in the game? And if so, who do you have voice acting? Yeah, um... <laughs> yeah, got me. <laughs> See, this is the part that you cannot say, right? I Are there going to be quests in the game? I don't know. <laughs> uh -huh. I like being the bad cop. I get to ask really <laughs> direct questions. Well, we're quick firing questions at you in a horrible manner. <laughs> There's this one image. Uh oh, tool menu. Here we go. It's got a couple of icons for hotkeys. 
I mean, yeah. obviously we don't even need you to confirm that in there we've got some sort of build, destruct, flashlight, inventory, and map. Mm -hmm. yep. Can you tell us anything about those other two buttons? Yeah, so the envelope? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just emails, you know? You send emails. Okay, so is that emails <laughs> from, like, the aquatic life that we're not getting? Is that DLC? Yeah. How much does that cost? Um, yeah. It, it cost, uh, <laughs> yeah, a, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and pay you, yeah, can I have what that is? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm not even 100% sure what the function of the letter one is. I, I don't think it's emails. Okay, or I shouldn't enough. have said that because you would have put it on the wiki and then it wouldn't have been emails. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Okay, and what about the C button? Is that your scan? The sorry what? The C button, the, or the thing that's labeled C, the little magnifying glass with the plant. Is that your scanner that we've seen in the trailer? I, I can't see that at all. What are you talking about? <laughs> he just can't see it. On the far left side. No, can't see. I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. You can't see the... No, I'm talking about the magnifying glass that's to the left of I'm the V. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so, so that that there... Uh, so you know how there is... Uh, we did confirm pets, right? On the um, the main page. So that you, you find food for the, the pet. Oh, that's what that's for? Okay. Now the thing is, we've had so many trolling attempts now that I don't know if that's a feature confirmation or not. <laughs> uh -huh. He sounded pretty serious, but I have no clue. I think this means that Jace's mission has been successful. Did you see how serious I was when I said the pricing model? Yeah. I've never been more serious in my life, guys. So about this overclocking thing, am I going to need like a calculator in order to play this game? It's just another tool at your disposal that you can use to better your factory. But that, that, that brings up a pretty good point, Killer. Like we have one guy here who is obsessed with the stats of all the machines and that they run perfectly because he does calculate things. And he's like, if I do this and this and this, then I should achieve 100% efficiency. Right. And when he doesn't hit it, he's like, what the hell's going wrong? And then he digs through the code and he finds... Actually, there's a bug that stops it from being perfect. I think that's going to be reassuring to a lot of Factorio hardcore fans. Because Oscar talks about the complexity of the game, mm -hmm. with different factories producing things at different speeds and requiring different portions of components. Yep. And the maths puzzle there, I suppose you could call it. Some people were saying, like your guy on the team who loves crunching the numbers, the, that example sounds really simplistic to them, having been playing Factorio for years. Yeah, I, I fully expect people to be concerned about that especially those who come from Factorio. Um, the example he gave in that video is absolutely simplistic. Yeah. But the thing to remember here is not everyone, maybe the major portion, but not even remotely everyone who is following us has done yeah. stuff like this before. Just because he gave that example doesn't mean, oh, a two to one ratio, that's such a big deal, you guys. <laughs> like we know it's not a big deal. It's not like that's the pinnacle of complexity in Factorio. Yeah. Okay, so you're implying there is more complicated stuff than that in the game, but you're also saying that the game is an A specifically at Factorio fans, so that's not your only concern in terms of design complexity. We have a very good idea of what Factorio fans will expect, but we, we need to think of people other than them as well, because they're not the only people. Do you have any actual idea of what proportion of the interest in the game comes from Factorio fans? I don't, maybe someone else does, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're not spending a lot of time thinking about what game you're making based on the community, you're making your game and if people like it that's cool Th that is that is absolutely our priority and and that's always been the case with coffee stains i have to say i feel like that's a really healthy priority that's yeah. a good way to do things because it guarantees that the game you're making is something you're passionate about and something you're going to care about which i think long term is always going to be good for the community hey you should have this feature which is in factorio i mean that's fine if they like the idea of that feature etc etc that's great but we're mm -hmm. not thinking about what features can we take from factorio we have this vision for this game. What works best for our game? And, yeah, I and mean, so, that's all well and good, Jace, but will yeah. there be pipes? <laughs> Fucking pipes. <laughs>